Hi, my name is Josh. I am the co-owner of Genesis Exotics, LLC. You can find us at www.genesisexotics.com. Today I'm going to discuss with you on how to build a basic dart frog setup. That is a fully bioactive, self-cleaning, self-sustaining ecosystem found great in your living room. For starters, dart frogs are one of the easiest pets to take care of. Very, very simple temperature requirements. You want to keep them at room temperature and you want to give them a 12 hour night and day cycle. With this type of setup you can have live plants and you can make it as simple or as naturalistic as you would like and have them thrive as long as you have the proper steps outlined as I am going to show you. For starters, the most important part is the drainage layer. Since dart frogs are from the neotropical rainforest, they live in the bottom layer of the forest floor where it is wet, sticky, and have puddles everywhere. With that being said, they like to have a very humid environment with the humidity around 90 to 100%. With that being said, there is always excess water drainage that will reach the bottom of the tank. That is where our Hydro Grow comes into play. Our Hydro Grow is expanded perlite that weighs one, uh, that, that weighs one ounce per one gallon. It is an extremely lightweight and affordable resource to use when building your enclosure. The first step is simply dumping the hydro grow to the bottom of the tank and evenly distributing it. As you can see, I dump the hydro grow right down here at the bottom, and I'm going to simply spread it out evenly so it covers all four corners of the tank, creating a flat surface. What is going to happen is, as your soil drains the extra water that your plant roots do not absorb, it is going to simply have all the water go to the bottom. This prevents the soil from becoming a microbial pit, and it also keeps your plants happy, healthy, and your microfauna happy and healthy. So your first layer is the hydro grow, as you can see here. From there, we like to do a screen divider. The screen divider is very simple. It protects your soil from your drainage layer. While this isn't 100% necessary, we have found it to make tank maintenance very simple when that time arises. To use your screen, it will be placed uh, directly at the bottom of the tank. The screens at Genesis Exotics are sold um, pre-cut for, for you, so you don't have to do any cutting. Simply place the screen at the bottom of the tank. As you can see here, it, fit, it fits snugly inside, directly on top of the hydro grow. From there, we... No metal. Oh, one last thing that I neglected to mention, we want to make sure we do not use a metal screen. If we use a metal screen, the Toxins from the metal will leach into the water, which can leach upwards into the soil and could actually cause metal toxicity to your frogs. From there, the next step is our jungle floor ABG drainage layer. This is our modified version of ABG, which we feel works significantly better than the normal Atlanta Botanical Gardens mix. It is comprised of Canadian sphagnum peat moss, coconut charcoal, orchid bark, vermiculite, and a little bit of coconut husk. Simply take the jungle floor and get yourself a bucket or tub, whichever is easier. Take your bag and dump it into the container. What we like to do is moisten it before we use it. I like to take a, a big container of water. This is approximately one gallon of, of warm water. You never want it to be hot. And I simply dump it in. From there, we want to work the soil in so it gets nice and wet and absorbs all the water. We want the soil to have the consistency so that way it retains its, its humid, it retains its moisture, but it does not drip excessively. Now I'm just sitting here mixing it. 
Okay. Perfect. So this is exactly where we want to be. So what I will do, I take two hands and I squeeze it. So that way it's just barely dripping. And I place it into the tank. As I'm placing it into the tank, I am evenly di uh, distributing it. Now, the biggest thing that you remember, you really don't need a lot of soil in your tank. Or on average, your tank only needs about an inch of soil, believe it or not. Your plants will lock their roots right into the soil, and from there, they will evenly spread around the bottom. Sometimes they will go through the screen into the drainage layer which is nothing to be concerned about. That just means that they're looking for a little bit more extra water, as there are some plants that like to have more water on the bottom end. Give me just one second here. For our jungle floor, approximately one gallon is good for, for a 10 gallon tank. So you can see it is now placed into the tank. I then take a good look at it to make sure that I have it evenly distributed around the tank, which from what I can see, it is, which is great. So after we have our soil in place, the next step is to install the most important thing. And those are your beneficial microfeeders, your springtails and isopods. These essential microfeeders break down decaying matter in your tank and put nutrients back into the soil. They also provide an extremely nutritious food source of food for your frogs. You take your springtail culture and you simply dump it in. You take your isopod culture and you simply dump it in. I like to spread them out a little bit, and you, and, and you can see them in there crawling around, getting ready for their new environment. So after you have your microfauna established, your next step is to add sphagnum moss on the top layer. Your sphagnum moss helps keep moisture into the soil, as well as protects your frogs from being, getting covered in soil, as well as offers another source of food for your springtails and isopods. When using the spag moss, I simply put some in a bucket, very similar to how I did the jungle floor. Take some water, and just dump some water into the tub. I moisten it around, so that way it, it's, it's, it's retaining a lot of its water. Now, you do not need a thick layer of the sphagnum moss. You only want to basically just lightly cover your top layer of soil. And you don't want to pat it down. Just simply place it on top. So I like to have it retain the consistency of dripping, but not sopping so the point it's almost uh, drenched. And then I simply spread it around the tank. What I'm doing... This is the basis of every bioactive enclosure, with exception of our terra firma, which does not need a drainage layer. This unique drainage system can last many years in a vivarium, as well as it is properly maintained. When I say properly maintained, it means that you make sure that the water level does not ever go past your drainage layer. So you can clearly see the layering system of the tank. We have the drainage layer here. We have the screen protecting the jungle floor from the hydro grub. You never want to let the water go past the layer of hydro grub because what happens is if the water goes past 
the hydro grow, it will turn the soil into a mud pit. That will essentially destroy the roots. It will cause microbial buildup, which can actually give your frog secondary skin infections if left unattended for an extended period of time. Our next step is to start adding our leaf litter and our decorations. What I like to do is I like to add the cork bark first. Cork is great. It is, it is a renewable resource imported from Panama. And I'm simply going to place it right in here. A very simple enclosure. You can make them as unique or elaborate as you would like. I am adding some of our southern palm bark. Not only does our southern palm bark offer feeding stations for your frogs, as your springtails and isopods will gather to it before the leaf litter, it also provides other areas for your frogs to hide. And then we can start with planting. All of our plants were previously disinfected with a 5% bleach solution and then rinsed off prior to planting. It is very important that you want to plant, you, uh, rinse off your plants before putting them in your vivarium. And you can see here how simple it is. Last but not least is our bromeliad. The bromeliads, they are they're epiphytes, which means they don't like to be planted into the ground. They like to be, they like to be put uh, above the ground and planted that way. Then we add a nice layer of leaf litter. The leaf litter makes your frogs feel secure, as well as offers other food for your springtails and isopods. Fantastic. Next step is adding your frog. This is a Dendrobates tinctorius azureus. This is a female that we are inputting into this tank. So I'm just going to open up the cup, let her hop in herself. Then I'm going to place in the screen lid, or excuse me, place on the glass lid. The glass lid we got cut professionally um, from a carpenter. However, you can also get them cut at Lowe's for a very affordable price. We then offer lighting. You can go with a long LED light, which will light up the tank uh, significantly more, but also puts out a lot more heat. Or you can use a basic dome light with a CFL bulb that emits at least 6,500 Kelvin. From there, we can go ahead and put the light on. Plug it in. There you have it, a very basic dark frog setup. Now, you can make them very simple, as I mentioned, or very elaborate. You can make them as elaborate as adding a cocoa hut with our moss fusion attached to the top. This is a, a good example of our moss fusion that has actually been growing now for almost nine months. You can see a nice lush green carpet. You can also add, add in some live terrarium moss as well. That offers a great, nice, subtle, lush green carpeting into your tank. We are very happy to offer uh, kits for $99 for it with everything that you see here inside the tank at www.genesisexotics.com. We offer full care sheets for all of the frogs that we sell, and we offer a live arrival guarantee. Thank you.